Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I had the mic a little too far away, but now we should have corrected that little issue right there. Welcome to Star Trek New Horizons, the 9.5 Alpha build. Um, this is a mod, a total conversion mod for Stellaris, which I know I did a kind of a really, really crappy intro video a while ago. I know. Um, but I finally got... Um, Utopia and the the Leviathan pack for it, um, and so did Hawk. So we should be getting hopefully a co-op game recorded of that whenever he gets back from his stuff for the Navy. Um, but uh, and I've tried like four or five times now to try to actually record a playthrough of Stellaris. And because uh, mo most of the videos I've seen on YouTube, they're rather short, like 20 minutes, and not a lot happens in 20 minutes in Stellaris. Um, so, but I've, so I tried doing longer videos, and I cannot keep focus, so I end up just kind of losing where I am in the whole thing, so I, I forget that I'm supposed to be talking and actually discussing what I'm doing, things like that. So I chose to go New Horizons, even though it's not quite done yet. And I'd very much would rather have been playing as the Borg, but because the, the Borg are not a playable faction in here yet. But um, but since everything's a lot faster in New Horizons, oh hello. But um, so I thought I'd show you this mod here because it's a lot faster than normal game Stellaris. It actually it follows a story arc, and so. It's a lot different kind of playing. And see, like, you can play as the United Earth, Romulans, Cardassians, the Dominion. Now you say, well, why isn't the Federation one? Well, United Earth, Andorian, v uh, Vulcan, and Tellarite. You know, like, those are members of the Fed. Those are the founding four members of the Federation of Planets. So, like I said, it starts as a story. So, you actually start off in, I want to say, the year 2150 in this game, and you just kind of go from there, and it will actually follow some of the story arcs from, from um, the shows, like the different shows. Like, it starts with United Earth, which was what uh, the original Enterprise was. That's why we actually have the uh, NX-01 right here. And, you know, the Klingon, Romulan, Cardassians, you know, they're all here. The Dominion's an interesting one. I have tried playing as the Dominion. That is hard. That is very hard playing as the Dominion. It says easy difficulty. I call bullcrap. Playing as the Dominion is hard. Um, actually, the the actually the Andorians are actually kind of a fun one because the story, but the story doesn't play much of a big part in theirs, so it's kind of hard to play as them. Um, Earth is average difficulty just because of the story. The story kind of makes things hard every once in a while. The Romulans probably have the best starting point, probably of everyone in this entire game. The problem is, is they are decadent, which means without slaves, they get minus 10% happiness, which is avoidable, but it's kind of annoying. But So in my opinion, the best one is really to go with the Klingons. And that's who we're going to probably go with to start this off. At some other point, uh, if co-op actually ever works on this, like especially if the story works, we will totally co uh, Hawk and I will totally co-op this because we love this game. I'll probably take, well, it depends on who you want to see playing as who. He'll probably take Klingon. I'll probably take Romulan because the Tal Shiar is a thing in this game, and it is gross. Warp 5 engine right off the bat. Nice. Um, science console. Already level two spaceports. All right, I'm down. Um, well, wow, already, jeez. All right, so I have everything going. Warp five engines are very important in this. Um, the consoles I will show you in a second, and spaceport, duh. Um, like I said, is the Klingons. You start off with four planets already. Oh, they rebalance it again. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, cool. So we are ready to go. Let's get some basics. Oh, yes, I forgot. About the ecological preserves. I love that in this 
Because it actually makes blood wine. Which is actually really funny. I'm good here. We are good here. We are good here. All right, let me go see if I got 40 left. Do I already have the... Um, do we have the ability to build the... Um... Things? Okay, no, we do not. Okay, that's good to know. I was looking for the Unity stuff. Um, where is it? the Ecological Preserve? Where is that Ecological Preserve I just built? Oh, here it is. Um, it's plus four food, uh, plus one happiness, plus one habitability on the planet. But it, if you get enough of them, you get like 0.2, I think it is, per planet. And they will make blood wine, which is a strategic resource, which actually raises galactic empire strength. Alrighty, so we have this nice little corner of the galaxy. Ooh, too far out. There's the Briar Patch. If you remember Star Trek Insurrection, uh, that's not... There it is, the Matara Nebula. That's from... Uh, wow, can I believe I'm forgetting what the name of this thing is? Wrath of Khan, there we go. Uh, the Orion Nebula, that's where the Orions are. You know, it's all here. And the Borg actually, I think, start out up here. Like, right out in this section. Because, uh, if I remember correctly, it's... Alpha Quadrant is here. Beta Quadrant is here. Gamma Quadrant is there. And Delta Quadrant is there. But alrighty. Um, first things first, we gotta get everything going. So let's split up the fleet. Um, this isn't nearly as important as it is a normal Stellaris in scouting wise. But uh, you do need to find your surroundings fairly quickly in this just to see if you can colonize really fast. But as the Klingons, you don't really need to leave your sector for a very long time because you already start with four planets. You see, my core system's already maxed out. So it's kind of useless to. But uh, you know, it's just one of those things. You can if you want. But it is good to survey everything in your territory, you know, so you can start getting the mines going, things like that. Alrighty, and the construction ship can go ahead and begin building as soon as I have the resources. Let us hit it. I'm going to leave it on fast. Uh, the way it works is uh, slowest, I forget what slowest it is, but slow is just, you no know, slow. Normal is, a to introduce myself. go away, Q. I don't need you. We, really we don't need you. Go away. All right. Um, yeah. Um, fast is, I think, two. Yeah, it's two days per second. And then fastest is just the fastest that your computer can handle. That's nice. Um, mine is not going to be very fast on fastest, so it's oh, cool. Gamma Aerodon. Oh, wow, there's a... Wow, there's a tier 5 plant, 25 planted here. And it's arid. Great. Oh, but since I have Utopia, now that I'm thinking about it, um, I remember I had the Traditions tab, and now I have the Ascension perks. And these do work in this thing. So I can build... I can't build? Oh, you guys suck! Oh, screw you guys. Oh, man. I was going to say I can build rings, ring worlds and Dyson spheres and stuff. I was really looking forward to the century array. That was really what I was wanting. That sucks, because I think the Sulaban are up here. They don't actually have a planet. Like, see, like I have four planets to start off. The Sulaban don't. The Sulabons actually start with a habitat, which when... I find them, I will show you. Wow. I forgot that I am actually doing... I forgot that I don't suck. And do not leave your home planet with the stuff yet, or pirates will show up. Alrighty. How we doing? That's a good starting point for you. So I can't actually build the Unity building? Oh, the Dilithium refineries, those are cool. 
um, when you find that resource, um, you can build a planet. Like a dilithium moon on one of your planets. New. Alright, and that's good for you. Come on back. We shall regroup at Quonos. Alright, so see, like, that's enough. Like, right there. I just needed to see kind of the basic layout of everything around me. Because you will find everything very quickly. Like, uh, somebody's here. Somebody's right here. Somebody's right here. Somebody's right here. Somebody's, like, all through here. The Romulans are here. The Federation is, like, this entire chunk here. The Ferengi are this entire chunk here. The Cardassians are this entire chunk here. I mean, like, you are so crammed up next to each other that it's really not even worth it. I'm trying to scout out because you will find all the territory fast enough as it is. But I'm very glad that they did uh, drop this a little bit. Um, leave it; you're not good enough. The uh, in the first version I played of this, like the patrol frigates, they were not 158, which that's still really high in Stellaris. See, it's base 225 and everything. But so is it just because I'm playing as the Klingons? I guess it is. Well, they still dropped it a little bit because it's 225. But, like, if you're playing as the Federation, a single patrol frigate costs, like, 300 minerals, which early game is absolutely ridiculously high. There's a size 24 tropical in my territory. And it is blank. I do not like blank planets, especially in this one. Because in this one, one of the annoying things is, is you can only build... Um, science facilities on an actual science spot. So, like, see this one here? How it's blank? I cannot actually build a bio, and I cannot build any of these three. You can only build the ecological preserves on food tiles, like here. Which I'm going to do, because I very much like having blood wine. Blood wine is actually a really useful resource. And you're building that one. Do I have yours going? Nope, but I shall. But see, like here, plus two science, so I can build one here. But I can't build a science, like a physics one here. I can only build this one. That, and they only give you research in that section, which is very annoying. Because in um, the original version, um, you could, whenever you put down a science facility, you get... Like, an extra bonus in that tab. Oh, cool. Warp 5 engines. Nice. Um, let's go phase disruptors. So we're all pretty good here. Let me get the uh, ship. Thank you. Let's get the warp engines up and running. There we are. Warp 5 engines. Save. Oh, tactical consoles. I will get to that. Give me one second. Let me finish upgrading everybody and getting them. Uh, there we go. The next upgrade of engine. Because uh, that, that does matter. The engines do matter. Trust me. Alrighty, because it's speed and all that. Alright, so let me go ahead and get you upgraded, and I will get you upgraded, and then we can talk about consoles. So science consoles, emergency bulkheads, auxiliary power banks, crew quarters, all these, you know, security stations. All of those plug into these slots here. Thank you. They plug into these slots here. See? So I only have nuclear reactors right now, but like when I finish the science console one, I'll get like something for here. Things like that. And uh, this is your hull plating. I don't remember which one of these is which. I think that's just the hull plating. I think this is where you eventually get shields. That's the sensors, thrusters, uh, your computer core, and then your uh, warp engine. The warp engines are nice because they will actually generate power. The bigger they are, the more power they do, things like that. So it's kind of nice. Anomaly, this one's at 20. Leave it. But as soon as he's done scanning, um, 
I will actually start building some more stuff. That one I will do, because it's only zero, which probably means it's a story mission. But yeah, see, if, it's good to do the How to Worlds one, because it gives you a lot of early science, things like that. How we doing on my clock here? All right, we're just over 15 minutes on my clock, so we'll think we'll go to 20 minutes on this video, just to try to make sure I can keep myself, you know, in into it and everything and not losing my track. Um, where's... Okay, I can't do it. Okay. I was going to see if I could use my typical BS thing that I used to do in the vanilla version. Okay, so we're going really high there on the food stockpiling. We're on balanced. Actually, you know what? That's fine. Put up shields, cut off. The... Okay, well, hang on. What do we got here? Alien vessel above Zeta something activates as the short range scans initiate. Drone emits a nuclear nucleonic. There we go. Beam directly at Captain whatever. Immediately fall to the floor. Number one initiates red alert. Medical team rushes to the bridge. At first glance, he's knocked out. Chief medical officer quickly realizes the captain is in fact in a deep REM cycle and generating nano no oh, sorry neurotransmitters at unprecedented levels and appears to have be having vivid dreams. Try to get out of range from the drone, lock on weapons, put up a shield and cut off the beam. Try to get out of range. The helmsman maneuvers the ship away, but even at full impulse and manages to keep up with your ship. Wait and see. Fifty minutes passes, captain seems sleeping soundly. The crew is uneasy about allowing an alien vessel to paralyze that. Oh, it's Grilka. <laughs> that's that, that's that, that's a that that is a really funny joke. Actually, what just happened? Oh, cool! So my scientist leveled up. I guess. I don't know. Right? Oh, whoa! So he just jumped from two to four that's awesome because I was able to do that because I for, didn't read the last one because I'm an idiot and didn't read um, we got to get spaceports built while I'm thinking about it that is the one thing though is the Klingons in this because you're strong and whatnot you get a bonus here because you're strong Station complete. Um, it is gross so you, you make bank in this game as the Klingons very, very quickly. Which is why I'm going ahead and building the spaceports. Get my uh, fleet cap way up. Warlord Duras. Uh, nah, whatever. But no, Grilka, strangely enough, that science officer's name is Grilka. Um, that is actually one of my favorite Star Trek DS9 episodes. Because the whole thing is, is it was at Quark's bar, he accidentally kills a Klingon who was drunk. Grilka was the name of his wife. Why is Martok here on whatever? Grilka was the name of his wife, of the Klingon that he killed. And so in order to get, you know, keep her family's honor and all that, she immediately marries Quark. And so for something like three days in the Klingon High Council, there is a house of Quark. It was so funny. And um, eventually what happens is... Because um, the whole thing was is another house was trying to take their land from them. So she... Cork actually helps her out. And, you know, proves that these guys are not, you know, really helping you out any. You know, they're trying to... Oh, hang on. Research is done. I'll finish my story. Um, that one. That one. Destroyers in this are a thing. If you can upgrade ships, you do it. Like, immediately. Because it's, it gets ridiculous. Very, very quickly does it get ridiculous. Uh, once these stations are built, I'll go ahead and I'll put these guys in. Because then the pirates won't be able to uh, attack my stations because I'll have a station there and I think that was my ooh, optical computers done I think that was my next level up on disruptors yes it was 
Sadly, I can't use them because they're the long range ones and this is the short range weapons, but whatever. That's good because I can use those on the uh, destroyers. Anyway, um, and so Quark helps prove that the Klingon that is trying to take their f stuff away from that family is unhonorable. And then Quark is relieved as the... He actually gets divorced like immediately afterwards. But uh, she actually shows up later. I want to say it was in season four, maybe season five. I don't know. And he, she and Cork kind of hit it off again. And so it's really funny because it was actually the first episode when Jedzia, Dax, and Worf kind of get together. Because Worf is trying to help Cork for some reason. I don't really remember. But he's trying to help him win over the heart of a Klingon warrior, basically. And so it's really funny in a way. <laughs> Um, let me make sure all these planets have stuff going on. And so it was actually a very entertaining couple episodes with her. And so that's why it's, that's why it's kind of making me laugh that she's a science officer already. That's really funny. Not nearly as weird as Martok being one. That's kind of weird. Let's get... That's, that's, this is really funny. So who's... And uh, who's the command... Uh, who's the commander-in-chief here? How do I check that again? How do I do that again? I don't remember how I look at my... Oh, species, I think. No, that's not right. I don't remember how I do it. There's a way you can tab... Actually, I actually think it's here. Yeah, there it is. Chancellor Duras. That's, that's really damn funny. Naval capacity and ship upgrade and ship cost. I like it. That is a great thing. You, sir, keep doing what you were doing. Civic research, war culture, an aristocratic elite. Those are actually pretty good for early game, especially in this one. And I found another. Oh, no, I already knew about those. Never mind. I'll shut up. Man, they're just. That's the thing, though, is since I only get four things, it's very, very, very much worth it. Oh, which one of these did it? One of these, uh, was it Harmony, I think, strangely enough? Oh, which one of you guys did it? Oh, there's one of these tabs that actually gives you increased stuff. I don't know, but it's usually good to go expansion, but I don't need expansion yet. Uh, it's usually good to go discovery, but I really don't need discovery yet. They increased it to a third? Wow! In vanilla game, it's only a tenth. Equal to a third of our monthly gain when surveying planets? I'm doing Discovery. Wow! That's ridiculous! Because research is such a high priority in this game that that's a little way too over the top. Alright, so let me finish maxing out my stations here. Done. And you may begin building mines. Wait, there's a research station here? Okay, I'll take your word for it. Go for it. And I'll start building my orbital... Wow, that's a really good planet down there. And I'll start building my orbital stuff. See, I've already increased my fleet cap up quite a bit, which is good, because I think each one of these is four. I think the Corvettes are eight. Sorry, the Destroyers are eight. So I get those in 17 months, and I want to say those are like... Oh, God, what are they? Uh, they're the, oh, they're the uh, Raptors. Uh, they're, they're, they're the... Oh, God, what are those things called? Uh, I don't know. You'll know them when you see them. And uh, you'll know you, when, when you see him in the next episode, because I believe we are closing in on 25 minutes. Uh, yep. So I will see y'all in the next episode, which will probably be about the same amount of time. So I will see y'all in episode two.